Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today in War Thunder, we're having a look at a spreadsheet, and the reason we're doing that is because I thought I would visualize uh, something that I've been saying for a few weeks now, and that is pretty much the cost of update 1.81. So what I've done is I've written down all the values of the RP, SL, and uh, mod RP costs for each of the new vehicles. This obviously isn't including premiums. Uh, I've taken a base sample set of some of my matches in tank matches. So here are all the costs in RP of uh, all of the new vehicles, air and ground. Then we have the cost in SL of them. So this is just to buy them. Then we have the crew cost. So this is to actually use them. And then we have the mod RP cost which is uh, right here. Now, the reason why I didn't add in repair costs to this, because repair costs change depending on what modifications that you use, so it's very hard to track. And also, I didn't add in mod SL costs, because after going through the uh, cost in SL and the crew cost of these machines, what I found was uh, it didn't really matter. And the reason for this is because the whole point of the spreadsheet is to show you how long it's going to take you to grind these vehicles, and the SL costs are way lower than the time it takes you to grind the RP costs. So therefore, you should be able to grind the SL costs before you have uh, done the RP costs. So the reason why I did the cost in SL and crew costs is to show you that compared to the RP costs. But I didn't do the uh, extra costs because, first of all, as I said, it changes over time depending on your modifications. And also, on top of that, <clears throat> uh, the fact that uh, it was going to be less anyway. So the maximum amount of time it's going to take you would not be changed. Uh, the data set that I used is from yesterday. Uh, yesterday I used the AMX-13 SS-11. This is a premium uh, French vehicle. It's one that I'm very good in, and I was using it to grind out the Char 25T. Yesterday I played 23 games. Uh, two of them, uh, number 14 and 15, were in the Soviet uh, machine, the BMP-1, to get the BMP-2, and uh, the rest were in the uh, the French AMX-13 SS-11. So we have a premium vehicle on top of a premium account. Uh, victory 17, defeat 6, uh, so 74% win rates. And then uh, through this data set, I was able to get the average RP gain and average SL gain. So in this uh, experiment, I suppose you call it, or, or, you know, whatever we're trying to do here, obviously you need some constants, uh, because then... Uh, the thing doesn't make sense. So I did throw in some constants. Uh, the first one was uh, four matches per hour and four hours per day. I think uh, 16 matches a day for uh, people is completely at least doable. And I wouldn't say it was the average, but I'd say if you wanted to, you know, grind these vehicles at a decent pace and let's say you have work, uh, you have, uh, you know, family, you have friends, four hours per day is still quite high, uh, but it's probably the maximum you're going to be able to get out of yourself if you have all of these other factors. The four matches per hour uh, is obviously 15 minutes per match. We're going from a realistic point of view uh, in this video, so therefore four matches per hour I think is possible, and... Um, if not, it's going to be slightly more than that. So once again, we're looking at the highest potential that you could have. Uh, highest potential uh, basically means that we're running premium, a premium vehicle. I didn't add in boosters though, because boosters are, uh, they can change. Uh, it is not really something you can personally control. You cannot control which uh, booster gets dropped, so therefore... If I just say, well, we use 100% boosters every match, then obviously it's going to take, you know, a lot less time. But the issue is you, from the random, you know, boxes or the RNG of the game, you aren't able to control that. So this is without boosters. So if you do apply boosters to all of these matches, then you personally can work out, you know, 
uh, what's going on. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to leave a link in the description to the spreadsheet if you want to modify it, add to it, whatever you want. Uh, basically, uh, it's using these two data sets that you see on the left here. And all of these are just simple calculations of just working out, you know, each of them here and there. Uh, there's nothing really that's uh, crazy. We're just using sums and averages and uh, then, you know, just some uh, different stuff using constants uh, to work out some of the values. So it's not, you know, it's not mind breaking, but it, you know, it, it illustrates a point. Uh, the other constants that we're using, so vehicle RP equals uh, mod RP. What this means is in matches, uh, because I was able to get an average RP gain of 4,223, this was towards vehicles, then what I'm just making is the vehicle RP equals the mod RP. So if in a match I've made 4,223 vehicle RP, that also equals the mod RP. Now, obviously, you normally make a little bit less mod RP compared to the vehicle RP. So this is, once again, a best case scenario. And um, I'm trying to make it like that because I want to show you uh, the, you know, the, the ultimate potential that you can get. And then also I worked out the GE cost. So one GE equals $0.0046. This is Canadian. And then uh, 380,000 RP equals 8,445 GE. This is if you want to uh, boost your, you know, if you want to boost a vehicle using GE, this is what you do. And uh, you also need, you know, expendable G, uh, not GE, expendable RP. Uh, but I didn't factor that in because uh, I didn't really see the point. And then you have 1 RP equals 0 0.0222 GE and uh, 25,000 GE equal $115. These are just the uh, these are just the values either out of the game when it comes for RP or when it comes to uh, the store that you can buy. So $115 is 25,000 GE. This isn't taking into account, you know, if you buy it on a discount or anything like that. This is just the best value bundle uh, that you can get. So I decided to take that and work it out. So what did I find uh, from this uh, whole thing that I set up yesterday? Uh, trying to work out for me personally, you know, how much everything will cost. Well, it's going to take a hell of a long time to grind the majority of these vehicles. And this is the problem uh, of the patch, in my opinion. There aren't any vehicles that are easy to grind. Uh, the only ones that are easy to grind are the I-225 and maybe the Char 25T. Everything else is ridiculous amounts of numbers, and I'll illustrate that. So, the total matches you need to get uh, just the vehicle RP overall is 1,364. Now, that really doesn't sound like a lot, uh, but when you actually go into the, you know, four matches per hour, four matches per day thing, which I think is a reasonable amount of time for people to have, you're talking about 85 days. Now, 85 days is what? Uh, 7 times 4 is 7, 14, 21, 28. So you're talking about two and a half months. Two and a half months in order to grind out everything. And that is if you have all of the vehicles researched before them, and if you're using your optimum research method, so using premium and using a premium vehicle. The total time or matches it takes for SL is 518. So uh, before you get to that, uh, you know, the RP vehicles amount, you should have the total amount for SL. Uh, obviously, as I said, not counting repair costs. And then the total um, amount of matches for the modifications is 2,996. So 187 days. Now, if you add both of them together, Let's say that you decide to grind out all of the vehicles, buy them, and then, uh, you know, go on to play them all uh, in order to, you know, research them all. And remember, BRs are based on your vehicles being at their most optimum, so having all of their modifications. If you want to be fully feasible in the meta of War Thunder with all of these vehicles, it's going to take you about two-thirds of a year. If you're going on 16 matches a day, two thirds of a year uh, to be able to do this. And this is with premium, with a premium vehicle. So this would be if you talismaned a vehicle uh, while you were doing this. 
Now, I decided to just have a look at ground forces, uh, because I know a lot of people are just interested in ground vehicles, and also with helicopters now, it seems like uh, there's issues with helicopter research, like it's a lot lower than uh, a lot of people uh, are wanting. All I can say is look at what they did to ship, up, uh, ship RP and also tank RP compared to aircraft, so airplanes I should say. So yeah, uh, don't be surprised. Uh, for ground vehicles, it's going to take you 581 matches, so it's going to take you about 36 uh, total days to grind out all of these vehicles at uh, 16 uh, matches a day. And um, the amount of matches for the Silver Lines is 165. The total matches for the mod, uh, for the mod, for the ground vehicles is 739, with total days required 46. So the total days required uh, is around about a month and a half, I think is probably the best, uh, just less than a month and a half, uh, to be able to get all of these ground vehicles at a point where you're using premium and also a premium vehicle to uh, get them. So this is if you have like the T55AM or the XM1, or if you have uh, the new Leopard A1A1, you know, L44. So with that said, uh, it is it is possible to do in about a month and a bit if you're just going for the ground vehicles. But obviously, not everybody has 16, <laughs> 16 matches a day with a double premium. Uh, so, but yeah, that's basically what you're looking at. Then I decided to narrow it down a little bit more. Uh, just go for one of the high vehicles. So the M1 IP, which is 390,000 RP and 499,000 RP cost. Uh, the RP for the vehicle uh, will take you about 92 matches and uh, it will take you just less than 6 days of grind. The RP for the mods uh, is a 118 matches and it will take you about 7.5 days to grind that. So you're talking about just less or just about actually 2 weeks uh, to complete this one vehicle. And then you have SL uh, for the vehicle. It'll take you about 35 matches, and it'll take you about two and a quarter days to grind. So in order to get the M1 IP into fighting shape, into 10 OBR shape, you will have to get yourself... Uh, just remember, this is if you have a talisman on the M1 IP as well, when it comes to the modifications, it'll take you about two, two weeks uh, to be able to do it. Now, you can replicate that for the M247, for the TAM, for the TADB, and also for the Warrior, uh, since they're all basically the same cost. And that means that there is at least a month and a half right there. <laughs> or at least, sorry, it's it's around about a month, you know. Like, you have, um, uh, you have uh, just to buy, just to get these things, you know, six days, so that's six, twelve, 18, 24, that's 30 days uh, right there with all of those top tier vehicles. And I uh, decided to also have a look at how much it would cost. Hey, it's me from the future. Uh, <laughs> while I was uh, editing the video, I realized I'd got something wrong. So in the total GE for mod and total cost bits, instead of timesing it uh, by you know, the GE by giving it the proper ratio, I divided it instead, which is why some of the numbers that you'll see at the bottom of the screen, basically here, will be absolutely insane. And all I want to uh, let you know is uh, just make sure that uh, you've seen this part of the video because it has to be uh, corrected. So the total cost uh, to RP for vehicles, uh, if you want to pay for it, is just less than $600 Canadian. The total cost for all the modifications is $1,292, and the total G is $127,872 for the vehicles, and the total GE for the modifications is $280,872. So if you want to be able to uh, get, you know, these uh, these things, then uh, what you have to do is pay that much. So do you want to invest two-thirds of a year into something, or do you want to pay $2,000? That's pretty much uh, the way I see this. And <laughs> it's uh, obviously, you know, the, the general consensus of 
free-to-play games is that they are very much balanced on the edge of cost. So time is something that it's going to take you absolutely ages to do something, or you can just pay for it uh, at a nominal sum. This is pretty much how I see uh, what's happening here. Uh, no different to any other free-to-play game, but it is definitely an issue. Uh, but yeah, the, the cost is less than uh, what I calculated before, and I want to make sure that you know that everything else uh, stands uh, that I say in this video. So, uh, you know, enjoy the rest of the video. And it's not a surprise, we have an absolutely ridiculous amount of top tier vehicles. Not even just looking at the ground, all of the helicopters are classed as top tier vehicles if we look at their cost in RP. 380,000 and 390,000 and all of their mod RP costs also are exactly the same 494,000, 496, 497,000 and this is the problem with the update. As a content creator who does not use GE uh, in order to spade anything or in order to research anything, the only time I will use GE is if I buy uh, premium vehicles or buy premium time, I'm left in a situation where I cannot make any content for these vehicles without having to use GE in a, you know, in a decent amount of time. I personally am not going to use GE because I don't want to. I think it is wrong to do so. I think it skews the review and I think it's much better to grind through a vehicle. Right now, at this point, I've unlocked the Char 25T. I've unlocked, uh, I'm 10 grand off the BMP2, and I'm about, and I've fully unlocked the I-225, and I'm about halfway through modifying it. So with all of that in tow, that is where I'm at as a person who's been using premium, and also a mix of premium vehicles and non-premium vehicles. And uh, so far, you know, I would say that's okay. But the problem is, uh, as a content creator, you're left in a spot where the only people who are going to have these vehicles have GE'd them. So just understand that. I want you to understand that and I want you to go forward and uh, make sure that your opinions are not swayed by others who are using GE to do these. Now, if you want to find the full potential of a vehicle, go ahead. But just understand that these numbers lay out not exactly a bright picture. These numbers lay out a picture which is incredibly grindy, uh, I would say. And this is on top of all the other rank 6 and rank 5 stuff which you already have to grind. Now, what is the positive side of these numbers? Well, the positive side of it is that you will have content for months. You won't be able to play it, but you'll be able to research it for months. And when you have researched it, you will feel good because it's taken you so long to research it. And uh, with that said, the, the way, the a positive way of looking at it is you will always have a goal to work for for a very long time, uh, even two thirds of a year. <laughs> if we look at the numbers. So with that said, you know, if you're that type of person who is objective orientated, then that is really good for you. The negatives is that it's going to take two thirds of a year in order to play all of the new vehicles that they put in the game. And what happens every few months is we get another update, which may have all of the other uh, 390, 380,000 vehicles uh, that we're going to get. And it got to a point with rank 5 where people started saying that the RP was getting ridiculous. It was getting to a point where it was way too high. And, you know, the, they said to Gaijin, the community said, look, we need this stuff lowered. And Gaijin did lower it. What they did in the next few updates was add a ridiculous amount of top tier vehicles and just put them at uh, what the old research used to be. So we didn't actually get much of a change, it just meant certain vehicles were lowered. I think we're at that point again. We're at that point where we have so many vehicles which are 380,000, 390,000, pretty much all of rank 6 is 380 or 390,000, the only vehicle that's I can see which isn't that, is the BMP2 at 210,000, which is still a ridiculous amount, by the way. So with all, with that said, I feel like we, we sit in a point 
when we need stuff reduced. Not in SL. I know a lot of people uh, complain about SL. You know, they complain about repair costs. They complain about, you know, the cost of ammunition. But from these figures, the thing that matters the most is the RP cost when it comes to your daily life. Uh, when it comes to War Thunder, when it comes to the grind. And I want a situation where a new player who comes in does not sit there and is stuck not being able to play anything top tier for ages because they have to go through this ridiculous grind. I know a lot of people have been playing the game for a long time, such as myself. You know, I'm more than five years at this point. But think about if somebody picks up the game today and wants to play top tier. The first thing that's going to come to your mind is, well, they're going to be awful. They're going to be, they're going to be shit at the game. They're not going to have experience. They're going to ruin it for everybody else. Right? If they get in their M1 Abrams quickly, then they'll just anni- then they'll just be annihilated and it won't matter. Yeah, you're completely right. But the other option is they just buy an XM1 and do exactly the same thing. So why don't we reduce these RP costs to a level which is attainable in a decent amount of time? There is no way an individual will be able to research all of this, plus all of the uh, modification RP, plus, you know, keeping up his silver lions, in the time for the next update. The next update, generally we get three updates in the winter. You get the one in September, which is the one that we've seen here. You get the one in uh, either early November or middle November, and then you get the one around uh, early December or early January. Last year, that's how it worked. The year before, it worked exactly the same. And the year before, it worked exactly the same. Last year, we got a ton of content. We got the French, we got the Italians, we got the French air, we got the French tanks, we got the Italian air. It was wonderful because it was a great mix of trees, which had everything. It had a little bit of everything. I know a lot of people would complain about French rank 1 tanks. Fine. But guess what? It doesn't take you 40 days to get through it. It took you maybe... Three to four, if you're running premium and premium vehicles. This, if you want to struggle, you'll be struggling for two-thirds of a year, not four or five days. And you will be struggling with vehicles that you may not enjoy, and all you'll have to do is just move on and play something else. There's literally nothing else you can do. At least if you are grinding through a tree, such as the Italians or the French, you'll know in a few games you'll be done with it, and you'll be able to move on to the next interesting thing. But in this, all we get is a ridiculous amount of grinding for very, very few vehicles. I'm hoping that, and this is pretty much because of helicopters. Helicopters are crazy overpriced for what they are, and also coupled with all of the rank 6 stuff that they've added. They've added, let's see, out of the ground, M1 is a rank 6, BMP is a rank 6, M247 is a rank 6, TAM, T80B, and Warrior are all rank 6. The Chow 25T is a rank 4, and the M48, I believe, is a rank 5. So you have one rank four aircraft. So rank one to th- uh, ground. Rank one to three has been forgotten in this update. Let's look at air. You have the ME one six three B dash zero. It's a rank five by uh, by ground standards. It would be a rank six. The I two two five. It's a six three. So it's a rank four, I believe. But it's teetering on that rank five if we look at the ground standards. And then you have a bunch of rank five and rank six helicopters. There has been literally nothing for rank 1 to rank 3. And these are normally the vehicles I personally enjoy. The reason I enjoy them is because they're based in World War II, the history is interesting, they're normally either interesting prototypes, or maybe there's some production models that should have been in the game a long time ago. But instead what we get is a bunch of vehicles from the 70s to the modern era. And I understand a lot of people are really interested in them. I personally am not, so therefore... This update, when it comes to content on this level, on vehicles, is not too interesting to me. The only thing that interests me is the light tanks. 
That's why I haven't asked for access to the helicopters. That's why I won't ask for access to helicopters. And I'll just grind them out using the system that they've talked about. And I'll talk in a future video. But yeah, if you want this Excel spreadsheet, it'll be in the description for you to, you know, have a look at. If I've got anything wrong, please let me know. But I've triple checked it. I'm pretty sure it's completely fine. Anyway, I hope you all have a wonderful day and happy grinding for the next two thirds of a year, I suppose.